Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And as y'all know, uh, Russell Westbrook is one of the most criticized uh, people in all the media, and you also know that Charles Barkley is one of the most vocal uh, people on media. And when you get Charles Barkley talking about a topic like uh, Russell Westbrook, you, you, you're going to get a lot of fireworks. Now, what am I alluding to here? Russell Westbrook recently got signed with the Clippers. For whatever reason, some people like Brian Windhorse um, have been taking exception to even the fact it seems like there's some people out there that are mad that this guy is even playing basketball at this point. Like, why is he even in the league? I don't understand. Why would they why would they sign this guy? What is he going to get? They were just asking him, like, what do you think? What do you what, what do you think they should do with Russell, Russell, Russell Westbrook in terms of his role? Should they bring him off the bench? They said no. They said, should they, should they start him in the starting line? They said no. He shouldn't do anything. I'm like, well, bro, what's what is going on here? Like, what's what's the issue some of you cats have with him now? Charles Barkley, for the past two years, has been the one of the very few voices out there that has been very vocal on the way uh, Westbrook has been demonized in the media. He's been one of the few people, and it seems like now that Russell Westbrook has decided to sign with the what is it with the um, Los Angeles Clippers, he believes that number one, it was the best decision for him. But he believes that Russell Westbrook is going to have a chip on his shoulder. And just yesterday, before tip-off, he absolutely leaned into the Lakers for the way that they demonize him in the media. And he basically let it, I mean, he let his thoughts be 100% clear. So what we want to do is we want to play what he had to say here, and then we're going to come back and react to his comments. Take a listen to what Charles Barkley had to say there. No longer a Laker, now a Clipper. His impact for the other team in L.A. The best place that he could have possibly landed. I think... Because you have two guys that handle the basketball and they also can run the lanes um, and his value in other areas will be significant. His value of rebounding, his value of pushing the pace and his value of finding people would be more valuable than the fact that we need you to score. He doesn't spot up on this team. Well, and no disrespect to uh, Darvin Ham's a first year coach, but Tyrone Lue, Arguably, for the last three years, has been the coach of the year. And he's been right in the running. And so I think that playing for, for Tyrone Lou, without the difference of a first-year guy with LeBron, and all, is going to be significantly different for his basketball career in the end of this season. I think a couple things. This is his best chance to win a championship. You know I love Russ. I think having, having Tyrone Lou on the sideline is really important. Having... Kawhi and Paul George, like, he don't have to be the guy. He's going to be coming off the bench. But the anger, the anger he has toward the Lakers, because they, they really screwed him in L.A. They blamed him for everything. That team they had last year and at the beginning of the season, it was trash. It was flat-out trash. They blamed Russ for everything. He's going to be angry. It's going to be great to watch. This, and number one, this is his best chance to win a championship. To win a championship. Yeah. yeah. So you heard what he had to say, right? Number one, he feels like it's a good pickup for the Clippers. He feels like Russell Westbrook is going to be highly motivated. I've been looking at some film videos being suggested to me on YouTube. of uh, Russell Westbrook, you know, in the Lakers, I mean, excuse me, the Lakers in the Clippers practice facility. He, his spirit seems to be, seem to be very high. It seems like based on what I've seen and what I've been hearing, like those guys really want a guy like that. Um, you know, within the fold of what they're doing. Um, the organization seems to be embracing him with open arms. You have a guy like Paul George that really lobbied uh, for him to, you know, come there. And now what I'm hearing is that uh, Kawhi Leonard was absolutely open to the idea of pairing up with Russell Westbrook. I also heard some of the comments that he made in terms of what he aims to achieve on the basketball court in terms of helping out Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And one of his goals seems to be trying to make the game easier for them, help with the rebounding, you know, focus a little bit on the defensive side. Um, uh, what is it of the floor? So to me, Russell Westbrook is saying all the right things. And I think that he plans to put his best foot forward. He's also shown that he has the ability to put his ego in his pocket. That was evidenced by the fact that he was willing to come off the bench uh, for the Los Angeles Lakers to help them win. Right. You're talking about a future Hall of Famer, a guy that's averaged a triple double multiple times uh, in an NBA season, was willing to relegate himself to becoming a bench player. And what made it worse, to Charles Barkley's point, is that even after he did all of that, even after he decided, you know what, I'm going to come off the bench and, um, you know, kind of accept this role. 
people still found a way to criticize him. They still found a way. Um, even Skip Bayless, who we're going to get to a little bit later, obviously, depending on when you see uh, this particular episode here, he has some things to say to him. But in terms of the Lakers, um, I think what Charles Barkley said was 100% on the money in terms of how they allowed him to be scapegoated. Um, this is also evidenced by the fact that of, of some of the reports that were coming out, like one of them that the um, David Medman of ESPN came out on ESPN and essentially said that, um, you know, the reports were saying that Russell Westbrook was like a vampire. You know, someone told him that or whatever it is. Now, why would someone leak that information at David, Dave McMenamin and then have that information go on, you know, be made public on ESPN, the biggest sports media platform in the world currently, at least in the United States? Why would why, why would someone in the Lakers office want to do that, especially for a guy that's no longer on the team? Right. Why would that be the case? Why is that even necessary? Um, you know, so I think Charles is 100 percent. Uh, on the money, I just saw yesterday the Lakers won a game against the Golden State Warriors, a good win, although, um, uh, what is it, what's his name, uh, Stephen Curry uh, was unavailable, but, but, but for now, for the people that are rejoicing and jumping up and clapping for the fact that Russell Westbrook is no longer there, I think that now you're removing all the possible excuses. You can no longer blame Russell Westbrook, although I think they're going to find a way to blame Anthony Davis. Um, if AD is not healthy. So, um, but for me, I think, uh, once again, Charles is on the money and I think that Russell Westbrook is, is going to do pretty good with the, um, uh, with the Clippers, but the Lakers need to stop this man. This is not the first time they just did it to Frank Vogel, you know, Frank Vogel, the way they threw they, the way they threw Frank Vogel out of the back door, which is totally classless. I mean, it was terrible. I don't even think he knew he Frank Vogel, I believe found out he was fired through the press instead of the Lakers telling them directly. And Charles Barkley was pretty livid um, over that. So the Lakers really need to get their act together in terms of how they're, you know, they, from a public relations standpoint and how they deal with some of their former employees, right? Never used to be like that. And as a matter of fact, um, of all the Lakers that I used to follow, like in the 2000s, there's only, there's only a few of them they still pay respect to. That's Paul Gasol, um, of course, Kobe Bryant, the late and great Kobe Bryant, maybe Derek Fisher, uh, to a certain extent, um, Lamar Odom from time to times and even Ron Artest, who I think is a um, he's a commentator from one of their shows that they have there. But to me, man, I think they just got to stop this. And um, the Lakers better make the playoffs. They better make the playoffs now that, quote unquote, this anchor that was pulling them into the water is no longer there. Right. So they better make the playoffs, because if they don't, then it's going to be like, well, it really wasn't Russell Westbrook after all. Maybe it was just that as to, to Charles's point. The team sucked, right? The team played no defense whatsoever. But last night, they got a good win, and it looks like they're putting their best foot forward. So what I want to know from you guys is simply this. What do you think about the points that Charles Barkley made in terms of the Russell Westbrook acquisition by the Clippers? And what do you think about what he said in terms of the Lakers? Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comment section, and we catch you guys on the next show. Peace.